Hello, I'm Emra Karagos. I will present exposure attack in this presentation. I will start with explaining super singular isogeny diff Hellman uh, key exchange algorithm, which includes diff Hellman, uh, classical diff Hellman, and elliptic curve diff Hellman exchange. I will then give some mathematical background about isogenies, and then finally I will explain what is what uh, super singular isogeny diff Hellman SIDH is. In the second part, I will give the exposure attack, the motivation, the attack steps. And finally, I will give a simulation as a video. In the Fialman key exchange algorithm, both parties are given parameters, uh, a prime P and a generator G. In the key generation step, Alice chooses a secret key A and computes G to the A mod P. Let's say it is capital A. Similarly, Bob chooses a secret key B and computes G to the B mod P. And let's say this is capital A. In the key exchange part step, Ali sends her public key capital A to the Bob, and Bob sends his public key capital B to the Alice. And finally, for this shared secret key computation, Alice computes capital B to the small a mod P, and Bob computes capital A to the small b mod P. Notice that both of them are equal because they are equal to g to the a times b mod p. In the elliptic curve diffie ECDH, both parties are given an elliptic curve E and the generator point G on this curve. In key generation step, Alice chooses a secret key A and computes A times G, which is a secular multiplication of a point. And similarly, Bob chooses a secret key B and computes B times G. They, in the key exchange step, they exchange their public keys A and B. And in the final step, Alice computes A times capital B and Bob computes B times capital A. Singular isogeny diff Hellman, SIDH. It's a key exchange protocol similar to classical diff Hellman. It uses isogenies on super singular elliptic curves. Because of the underlying problem is very hard on the super singular elliptic curves, it's a post quantum secure. Uh, on the picture on the left, it starts with the elliptic curve E, uh, and both parties compute secret isogenies, phi n and phi b, and they conclude up with ea and eb, elliptic curves ea and an eb. These, these results are public. They exchange with each other. Uh, after they exchange to each other, each party computes new isogenies, psi b and psi a, to conclude up with the final elliptic curve eab. And the j invariant of this elliptic curve is going to be used as a shared key for both parties. On the picture on the right, we can see if you start with an elliptic curve, there are many possible walks between the elliptic curves, and these walks are performed with isogenies from one curve to another. And it's very complex. These isogenous walks are very complex, and it's like a random walk. In this slide, we can also see the picture on the right. This day, both Alice and uh, Bob start with the elliptic curve E, and they compute E A and B E B. They are by using their secret isogeny maps, and then they exchange E A and B, and again compute the uh, isogenies and conclude up with EAB and use the J invariant of this EAB as their secret key.
Let me mention a little bit about the mathematical background of the isogenies. Let's first start with the elliptic curves. If, let's say, we have a finite field FQ and two points, two uh, numbers AB on this field, such that for AQ plus 71, 7, uh, 27 B squared is not zero. So, an elliptic curve is the set of points xy satisfying the equation y squared equals to x squared plus, uh, plus ax plus b and the point at infinity o. This time, a Abelian group under point addition, you can easily sum, uh, add them, add two points up, q plus p or b plus q, there it will give you another point on the curve, which means actually it satisfies the uh, equation. And if you are given a point P, the negative of P, inverse of P is very easy, just negative X and Y. And if you add the P and negative P, you has you have the identity element O, the point at infinity. The second multiplication, N times B, is just addition of N many P's, N many points P. The J invariant of E is just a computation with respect to A and B. And two elliptic curves are isomorphic. If they are isomorphic, then their J invariant is the same. n torsion group is actually the, point, the set of points such that n times p equals the point of infinity. It's a subgroup of E and uh, it can be actually, uh, it's actually isomorphic to Zn plus Zn if uh, P does do it N. Therefore, uh, we can find two points P and Q uh, generating this uh, torsion group, yeah. An isogen is a uh, non-constant homomorphism from E to E prime so that it maps the identity element of E to identity map element of uh, E prime. It's an homomorphism, so phi of p plus q equals to phi of p plus phi of q. And the kernel can be defined as the uh, set of points which is mapped to the identity element. And the degree of this phi is actually the uh, coordinate of this kernel. These are the H parameters. We will be given a prime p a special format, LA to the EA times LB to the EB times F plus or minus 1. Here, LA and LB are small primes. EA and EB are positive integers as an exponents of LA and LB. F is just a factor to make P the prime. Secondly, uh, we will be given a super, a super singular elliptic curve E over FP square. And we will be given four points, PA, QA, PB over e, such that PA and QA generates the, the LAEA torsion group of E and on the other hand PBQB generates the, the LBEB torsion group of E. SIDH key generation. In this step, Alice chooses a secret key MA such that this MA is between 0 and LA to the EA minus 1, and this MA is not divisible by LA. Then she computes an isogeny from E to EA such that the kernel of phi A is, which is IA, is MA times PA plus QA. Okay, since MA is a secret, RA, the kernel point RA is also a secret. And used by using this secret uh, kernel point, phi A becomes a secret isogeny. Bob follows the same steps similarly and computes his uh, secret isogeny phi B from E to EB. In the key exchange step, Alice sends EA, EBA, QBA to Bob, such that PBA and QBA are the 
image points of PB and QB under the isogeny phi A. We know that PB and QB are public to both sides, but phi A is the secret isogeny of Alice. So Alice is the only person who can find those image points PBA and QBA. She shares this uh, public key PBA, PBA, and QBA to Bob. And Bob similarly computes his public key EB, PAB, and QAB and sends to Alice. SIDH shared secret. In the last step, Alice finds a new isogenium from EB to EAB such that the kernel of this isogeny is MA times PAB plus QAB, which is RAB. MA is the secret of Alice. PAB and QAB is obtained from uh, Bob as, his public, as a part of his public key. And of EB is a starting curve, which is also a part of Bob's public key. So EAB, the J invariant of the EAB, becomes the shared secret of Alice. Similarly, Bob follows the same steps and computes an isogen from EA to EBA. EA is obtained from uh, Alice. Uh, Bob uses his secret key MB. He also obtained PBA and QBA from Alice and follows the same steps and computes EBA. And he uses the J invariant of EBA as the shared key. Since EAB and EBA are isomorphic, their J invariant are the same. The motivation. As we explained before, there are four isogenic computations in SIDH. In this attack, we assume that one of the computations has leaked, let's say from the memory, an intermediate kernel point S. Now the attacker can use this leakage to find the secret key M by knowing that S satisfy the following equation for some J and K. In this prayer attack, we have listed four isogenic, possible four isogenic computations. For simplicity, we will call L and E is the one of LA or EA or LB or AB. M, the secret M, is one of MA or MB. EQR is one of the PA, QA, RA or the others. And the starting elliptic curve E0 is either E, A or AB. The general, the general framework. When the attacker obtains an intermediate kernel point S, he knows that S satisfies the equation S equals to phi of k minus 1 to 0 of S to the j times r, which equals to, because r is m times p and plus q, so it equals to phi of L to the j times m times p plus L to the j times q on the curve e to the k. But the attacker only knows s, not ek, not k, or not j. But he can easily find the secret key m by solving this equation. He follows the three steps. The first step, he finds k and j, and therefore the isogeny chain phi from k minus 1 to 0. And then he solves the generalized elliptic curve discrete locating problem, 
which is s equals to m dash times phi of e plus phi of q by using wheel pairing. And in the last step, it finds m from m dash. Step one, finding k and j. Starting from the uh, elliptic curve E0, which is the starting elliptic curve, the eye taker looks for points of order L on each possible curve EI. Since L is prime, it's enough to keep the points in the tor L torsion group of EI, except of course for, uh, the identity point, in a list. Using this point, the attacker computes all possible L degree isogenies and their codomains and keeps them in to list. Finally, Kirk finds CK where S lies on, and therefore K. Later, the attacker obtains J since the order of S is L to the E minus K minus J. In the picture on the right, we start with E0 and all the possible arrows uh, is mapped to other curves, and one of them is E1. And then we apply the sim uh, similar thing for E1, E1, and you find E2. At some point, which is EK, this uh, EK will be the elliptic curve where S is lying on. Step two, solving the equation for M dash. We have already found the isogeny chain from the step one. We apply this isogeny chain to starting generators P and Q and find PK and QK. Now our equation is simplified to S equals to M dash times PK plus QK. And we will find M dash by using wheel pairing and solving the discrete logarithm problem. What's a wheel pairing? It's a map from En to En, I'm sorry, En times En to Un, Un is a primitive end root of unity, such that this map, En is a bilinear map, and uh, En of Pp, if we take the same points P and P, it gives us one. There are, of course, other properties of this uh, wheel pairings, but these two properties are enough for us. Let's go back to the equation. We have S equals to M dash times PK plus QK. Now, for this point S, we use QK as the second point and apply the wheel pairing EN. EN of S and QK equals to EN of EK and QK to the power M dash times EN of QK and QK. EN of QK and QK gives us 1, so we finally have EN of PK and QK to the M dash. We can easily find EN of PK and QK because we know PK and QK. So we, we can easily find the wheel pairing of these two points. And we can also find the wheel pairing of S and QK. So we have something like H equals to G to the M dash. And this is just a discrete logarithm problem. And this is very easy because the numbers here, M dash, Step 3. Finding M from M dash. Now the attacker applies a smooth brute force attack to find M from M dash. He knows that M times L to the J is less than L to the E plus J. And also he knows that M times L to the J is congruent to M dash in modular N, where N is the order of veil pairing of PK and QK. Therefore, he tries all the solutions of this modular congruence. In each try, Firstly, he checks whether he can obtain the point S. 
because he knows s. If so, the attacker also checks the other final computations, like uh, reaching the final points and the final curve from the public uh, key. The candidate is correct when they match up. Simulation of the attack. I actually uh, wrote the code for this attack and uh, capture a video when I perform the attack. I put it on YouTube. It's a, like a 14 minutes uh, video. You can watch the simulation if you want to. Hello. I remember I will do an exposure attack on a super singular isogeny the fail minute algorithm. I have two files, I will use two files. In this project, we introduced briefly the SIDH, the super singular defilement key exchange algorithm. We then mentioned the exposure attack and we successfully performed a simulation uh, and recorded and put it onto YouTube. Thanks for listening. These are the useful resources uh, for this presentation. The first one is the paper where the exposure attack is introduced. The second one is the book, uh, the Washington's book about elliptic curves. The others are like some examples about SIDH and some mathematical, giving some mathematical background about uh, SIDH. Thank you for listening.